for the introduction and for the organizing committee to invite me. I know we're running behind time, so I'll, I'll try to be as fast as I can. As you know, diabetes is, is, is increasingly occurring in younger individuals. It's common cause of blindness, renal failure, amputations, ulcers, and gangrene, uh, chronic neuropathy and impotence, premature dementia, premature ischemic heart disease and stroke, increased cancer risk, polypharmacy, personal and societal costs, and we're talking about a lot of costs to the healthcare service. What we do with somebody with diabetes, we start them, we say, hey, you have type 2 diabetes, let's start you on some tablets, you need blood pressure tablet, cholesterol tablet, and over time, we build it up that eventually we fail in our treatments, so they end up having insulin and injectables, and end up being a little bit like this donkey in the end, but they can't carry anything, and we just wonder why we're not succeeding, because most of our patients are not taking the medication. Um, we, we, did, we looked at, for example, insulin, insulin associated weight gain and, and, and poor quality of life and increased cardiovascular disease in the long term in, in people with type 2 diabetes. Now, the National Institute of Healthcare Excellence in the UK says that it's a, type 2 diabetes is a progressive long term medical con condition, uh, meaning that we can't reverse it and it's, it's, it's a fait accompli and the patients actually have to go on medication for the rest of their life. And diabetes education is really helpful in what they do. But actually, um, we did this large trial between Birmingham and Leicester. I was with lead in Birmingham with, 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 uh, with a large study looking at diabetes education and included white Europeans as well as South Asians. And what we actually, the bottom line of this is actually it made absolutely no difference in terms of HbA1c. So diabetes education doesn't work. So we failed in that. Um, it's very brief. It's not long lasting and doesn't make a difference. Now, we looked at what we call locally enhanced services. These are GPs that actually work really hard and they get paid extra amounts of money to be able to control blood sugar. But as you can see, only 50% of the people in the locally enhanced services were achieving uh, good diabetes outcomes in terms of HbA1c. It doesn't work. If you do what you've already done before, you're going to get what you're going to get. Um, so let's think about it differently. So we did two studies. Um, we did it a bit like Star Wars. The film starts with number two before number one. So we did diadem two study and we wanted to ask whether we can actually reverse diabetes. Take people who had advanced diabetes or insulin, can we bring them back? And diadem one was, can we actually put diabetes into remission? The diadem two was carried out in London by my PhD student, Adrian Brown. Um, just to point out that the, the grouping have got long duration of diabetes, about 13 to 12 years, and they were on insulin. And what we did, we put them on a total diet replacement phase with food reintroduction, um, and we followed them up to a year. But the main intervention was about six months. So what we observed is great weight loss of six months, uh, but as soon as you reduce the contact hours, then the weight started creeping back up, even though it remained significant at 12 months. Uh, HbA1c improved remarkably, uh, and you can see very nice that also insulin dosages went down. So in this group, Instant therapy was discontinued with about 40% of the individuals, and quality of life improved enormously. So it's possible to reverse diabetes, even in terms of reducing the medication burden, even in those advanced disease. Now, then I went to Qatar, and the setting of because Qatar, which is a multicultural, multi-ethnic society, is, uh, and we did a multi-institutional study, the high prevalence of obesity in Qatar, about 30% of adults, and 24% of children and adolescents, and perhaps diabetes is about 20%. Um, so first, we did a systematic review. What's been done in the Middle East and North Africa in terms of diabetes remission weight loss? And actually, very little was done. Very reassuring. Um, then we developed our intervention. It was based on what we could learn from what was done before. So we were learned from bariatric surgery that weight loss is a key component of diabetes improvement. Weight loss that is rapid is more likely to be maintained. So if you get people to lose weight in the first three to six months rapidly, they may succeed better. Um, but the other factors were younger age, early disease, better control for your medication, not taking insulin. So the earlier we take people with diabetes, the more likely we're going to succeed. Um, we also looked at the DPP and the look ahead study. And what we learned was frequent appointments were important. Energy restriction was important. Mere, use of meal replacements was important. Uh, physical activity was important, and early weight loss again. So in this study, we took people who were younger, so we called them, 
50 or, 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 or less early type 2 diabetes within three years, and we put them into this intensive lifestyle intervention. And what it involved was basically they saw a physician, dietitian, um, um, and also a trainer. Uh, they were put into a phase one, 12 weeks of total meal replacement, which included about 800 calories, um, um, nutrition complete, and the food was introduced over the subsequent 12 weeks. And then they went on to their own food. And we defined diabetes as HBO was so less than 6.5% for at least three months of medication, which was later adopted by all the international guidelines in terms of, in terms of what it should be. Now, um, this is probably too small for you to see, but if you can see that the age was about 42 years. Uh, uh, and the, these individuals, because of working in Qatar, they came from 13 different countries. Uh, and also the majority were males, so 70% were males, which is unlike any other studies which is done in weight management, diabetes is mainly dominated by women. Um, and the other point to make is 85% of them were working. So they had to come to these appointments, which are very frequent, every two weeks to be able to manage it amongst their employment. There was very little cardiovascular disease or complications because we were dealing with people with early diabetes. Um, so let's go cut to the chase. So what happened to these individuals? They lost weight nicely at three, six months and maintained it at 12 months. Now, if I showed you this for the study for semaglutide, if you stop medication at six months, what happens? The weight will go up. But actually, these individuals followed up this intensive lifestyle intervention and maintained the weight at 12 months. Um, body fat mass was in, re reduced. Uh, there was no difference in terms of weight loss, whether they were male or female. Both men and women lost lost weight with this intervention. Additionally, whether they came from the Middle East or North Africa made no difference at all. Um, in terms of achievement of key milestones for, uh, for weight loss, you can see one in five achieved more than 15% weight loss, which is quite remarkable um, in terms of if you look at any, any obesity medication, this is an amazing result uh, done through diet and lifestyle. Um, HbA1c, of course, improved greatly in the intervention group, but they're off medication, whereas the control group, which also improved, were getting the best medication they could get in terms of GLP-1s, et cetera, to control the body weight as well as the cardiovascular risk. When we looked at the final data, 61% of individuals who underwent intervention achieved diabetes remission, and 33% were normal glycemic. That means they don't have any sugar problem at all. We did uh, continuous glucose monitoring, if you click control our intervention across seven days, you can see the glucose variability and being outside the range. Um, this continued in the control group, but look what happened to the intervention group. As you go for 12 months, you will see this was maintained in the intervention group. Goodbye, diabetes. Uh, what we noticed was actually the, the weight loss was uh, also related to reduction in liver fat. So there's a correlation in terms of reduction in liver fat and weight loss. And indeed, those who achieved remission achieved greater fat reduction compared to those who didn't achieve remission. It's all to do with liver fat. Um, in terms of adverse effects, uh, events, there were very few uh, serious adverse events. The, the minor adverse events, mainly gastrointestinal constipation, there was some dizziness um, um, and um, very well tolerated. Now let's put diadem in the context of other trials. First of all, um, Diadem is about a decade younger than direct. Early acted was another early, uh, early trial in terms of early diabetes in the UK. Again, you can see the age of this group is about 60 years old. Diadem was about 40, 40 years old. So um, diabetes is occurring much younger generally in, in the Arab population compared to the um, European populations. Um, additionally, the HbA1c was called better controlled because there were early diabetes, newly diagnosed and early acted. Um, and 7% as a diadem. And as a weight loss, you can see the diadem in the intervention group, you can, you can achieve fairly good weight loss, which is better than direct, better than the look-ahead study, better than the scale diabetes study, better than scale pre-diabetes, better than scale IBT study. Um, so um, achieving great weight loss compared to other, other, other interventions. We carried out a proteomic study and combined direct and diadem data and based on proteomics, you can see glucose tolerance improved in the intervention group, liver fat improved in the intervention group, um, body fat reduced, uh, visceral fat reduced, and VO2 max level of fitness improved 
in the intervention group. Uh, and when you look at 10 kilogram weight loss, you can see with 10 kilogram weight loss, you could achieve very good glucose tolerance, reduction in visceral fat, uh, liver fat reduction in secondary prevention in terms of cardiovascular disease, improvement via VO2. So 10 kilo is the, is the sort of is the, the magic number in terms of weight. But further than HbA1c, further than weight, there was 71% remission of hypertension. These individuals did not have to take any more antihypertensives. Um, and of course, obesity is an inflammatory state. And you can see that um, CRP levels went down and as well as the white cell count in the, in the intervention group. Now, how do we predict response in these individuals? You can see the main factors of what the HbA1c and glycemic control was at the beginning. So the, the better the glycemic control, so quickie here is a measure of uh, um, uh, uh, insulin sensitivity. So the quickie the, uh, is, is a good measure of that. So the more insulin sensitive those individuals are, the more likely they're going to respond. The earlier we catch people with diabetes, instead of putting them on medication, if you give them the opportunity to actually reverse or put the diabetes in remission, it's a, it's a, it's a good, good outcome for them. Um, what motivates people to adopt this lifestyle? Everybody said we cannot do it. This is an our population. They like their rice and bread and uh, lovely food and everything else. So uh, we asked them, what made you initiate this? And I said, um, uh, and what was the freedom from the disease? What made you continue this disease? So they said, I was unhappy with how I was. And I want to be different uh, in terms of my family. My father had amputations with diabetes. I do not want to get there. And the timing is right, I'm ready to change. That has to be right. So the patient's not, not ready, it's not going to change. Um, they want to focus on getting rid of the disease. Freedom from the disease is a really important message to give patients. Um, and they were worried about the health consequences. And to continue, they want to see a positive change. They wanted good support. Um, seeing results quickly is really important for, for patients. Uh, fear of relapse we kept them going. They didn't want to go back to what they were before and also got feedback from healthcare professionals. So seeing people regularly made a difference in them. But don't just listen to me, just listen to somebody who actually, well, you can hear this. Are you there? Okay. Let's stop. Now it's actually 80 kilos, by the way. <laughs> Okay, so how do we translate it to this to practice? So in Qatar, we've set up diabetes reversal clinics. We have a clinic where people come and they ask for diabetes reversal. I put them through the program. Um, um, yeah, we have this as a national obesity treatment center. We're very lucky to have the largest obesity center in, in the world. We get 30,000 patient visits a year, and quite a substantial number have diabetes, where we can offer this treatment to them. Uh, there are also wellness centers in Qatar. In prim every primary care, there's a, there's, a, there's a gym and there's a spa, swimming pool. Actually, people can go there and actually try to change their lifestyle in terms of activity. Um, we've developed a national screening program, so we can identify individuals early and put them straight into a, a diabetes remission program. And as you can see, it's now made into all guidelines, European Society of Cardiology guidelines, 
and also ADA guidelines now consider diabetes remission as an approach that we should be taken seriously. Um, so to conclude, diabetes remission is a reality. It's not having the sentence of diabetes is not a good thing for people. And if you catch them early and give them a good intervention with the right follow-up, possible to achieve that. We need to think, rethink about type 2 diabetes. It's not all about medication, HbA1c control, cholesterol control, um, blood pressure control. We need to go to the downstream effects, one of the speakers was talking about, and really addressing that downstream problem, which is excess adiposity. And BMI is not a good measure of it. We need to find better measures of uh, classifying obesity as a disease um, and BMI is not, not not the way to go and there's a whole consensus happening in terms of defining what obesity is as a disease and where we can tackle it and achieve early diabetes remission as uh, as much as possible. Um, um, I want to acknowledge all the funders for the, for the studies that I presented. The, the study would not have happened without my team, me and my we worked very hard, but actually it was a very big team who achieved all, all, all this work. Thank you for listening.